Hello my friends, Bruce here. Oh, we got a dandy problem happening right now. My buddy Gord, uh, he's got, he's, he's picked up this lawn boy for his daughter. And for the last couple of years, it, it's been coming back because it quits running or it's not running right or, and I'm kind of naturally, I've uh, washed the carburetor, cleaned the jet, do all that stuff. And it comes back, and you know, and then he takes it away. They mow the lawn for a few times, and then it comes back. This is a BPR 5ES. So one moment, please. We're gonna get you to look down if you can. Look way down. Look way down. I'm gonna show you something, and we'll do it on the wooden part, so we're not using a conductive table. Can you see the letters on my on my uh, meter? Open circuit. 0.2 ohms closed circuit. So, from end to end, and I actually even uh, there we go. That's better. I actually even took a file and and uh, touched uh, touched up the tip so I could put my leads for the uh, ohmmeter on there. End to end, it's good. It's 3.5K, 3.91, sorry, 3.91K. That's 3,900 ohms end to end. That's the perfect NG, uh, NGK BP5ES. Is that right? BPR5ES, because so it has a resistor. So then I went from here to here, so there shouldn't be any leakage from the tip to the ground, because this screws into the block. And there's no, it's open. Can you see that? OL, same. But then if I go from the case to the tip, so I think there's a crack or there's some carbon or something that's gotten into here. Watch this. Four, 20 megs, zero open, 3.8 megs. So there's a super high resistance leak from the tip of this plug. I'll go right in here. From the tip here to ground. And NGK makes such a great plug. This is probably the factory plug because I tend to buy the BPR6ES just because they're more available and they're a little cheaper. But they're still, a, they're still an NGK plug. So now let's just have some fun. Are you with me? Right down there is, a, uh, is the Honda we're talking about. It's actually a, uh, a Lawn Boy Make. And I don't know if that's an AYP frame or an N or a MTD frame or do they all are they all owned by the same guy? <laughs> I don't know. Let's check the fuel. Oh boy. Not much fuel in it. That's interesting. There's enough. So I'm gonna start this up. If it starts, we'll let it run for five minutes or just a few minutes. Choke settles down. So are you ready? I'll see you in five minutes. I know it's kind of boring, but I'm just making sure you guys see what's happening. Now I'm going to put this old plug back in there, and we're going to see what kind of action we get to prove my thought. I was going to use a smart word, but that's good enough. Now we need a ratchet and a socket. And yes, Mick, I'm, I'm using my uh, knee pad here. Remember, everything's just very hot. Oh, it's running white. Oh, it's burning off the carbon. Right on. Okay, so we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to stick stick this guy in. This is the one, the BPR5ES that was in it when it came to me non-running.
it'll probably start. It shouldn't. Okay, so now we're going to put that other plug back in there. I know this is kind of repetitive, but this is what you have to do when you've got a, when you've got a tricky trouble. Oh, we need the, uh, the old plug, which is going to be hot. So now we got the new BPR6 ES in there. And this is the 5ES that it came with when it was running poorly or not at all. So now it should stir and stay running. Now remember all remembering that it isn't a it is an automatic choke. So sometimes they get wacky when it's in between hot and warm. But we'll see. friends. I don't even know if I should be uh, showing you this. But I'm having trouble with the linkage on this cute little lawn boy Honda. It's supposed to be a high quality mower and it's been back brought to me by my buddy Gord. I've had it back here a half a dozen times. It's driving me crazy. And I was talking to what's happening is the the choke is sticking on, right? And I think what's happening, and what Mick suggested, Mick's, Mick's small engines, Mick the mower man. <laughs> You'll find him if you need him. Uh, he said that maybe the, that the bar is actually trying to, on the, is on the other side of the 180 degree fl flip for the choke, and it's actually just trying to close the choke more. I just started it, it ran fine, but it might just be one of those intermittent things that drive us all crazy. So I'm just going to uh, do a small amount of fooling around. And uh, we're going to get a 10 millimeter swocket. And we're going to take these guys out of here. Okay, I've reattached the uh, dampening spring back to the throttle arm. Let's just do it from here. It was sitting right around here flopping and I think it was hooking on the choke. I'm going to do a couple of things now that I'm, I'm in control. But I want to get the wax, the wax ring out of there and clean it. I might have to take the carburetor right off. Eh? This is important. The guy doesn't see very many of these. Okay, this is the choke activation plate. Okay, it comes off like that. And it just activates and deactivates the choke. One of them is done by, I believe is done by a wind vane. And the other one is done by this little wax goober. I thought they just pulled out. Yikes! The wax goober is quite strong and it pushes on the spring like that. And I haven't had one of those out for a long time. It 
It's probably been glued in there. I had a subscriber complain to me that I, I walk around the shop and get tools and talk. But I think you guys forget that I'm just showing you what I do. This isn't a this isn't a Steven Spielberger production. Joke. Okay. And what I'm doing now is I'm uh, I don't know if I can get you to look at the look at the wax ring or not. Good. Excellent. So do you see that? Do you see that it came out longer? Right here. And that holds the choke off every time you start it up. Excellent. Now we just have to make sure it retracts. I'm going to take a clean rag and I'm going to wipe off that post. All right? Now I'm going to do a little trick that I've done before. Don't do this at home. This uh, carburetor spray comes out of here like Freon spray. There. You just have to push it back in. Perfect. We got it. So now I'm going to just have a look inside this carburetor. Are you guys done now? Go back to wide. Okay, so now I am going to just clean things up. Alright, my friends. I'm working on extracting this wax plug actuator for my choke on this Honda GCV 160 and I am really having a hard time grabbing onto that cartridge. It's supposed to just pull out of there. I know it. I've done it before. So I'm going to pull a pin out where the wax pin pushes this in and out so it's probably not calibrated anymore. And I have tried everything. Now I'm going to totally screw the world up by threading maybe by threading a screw into that thing this is a Robertson screw made in Canada, by the way. Okay. And then I'm going to grab it with a vice grip. Vice grip! There you are. And I'm going to tap it out. We'll see if that does the trick. Because these are a bugger to get out. This is the second one this week I've been suffering this with. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to see if I can tap that out of there. Ta-da! Look at the ugliness in there. So it's tarred in. I feel good. <laughs> this mower's been in and out of the shop a few times. With different problems too. I think it was made... Uh, the Friday after the Christmas party or the Wednesday after the Christmas party. But anyway, I have two options now. Some guys are telling me just to, this is the carburetor right here, eh? some guys are telling me just to set up a manual pull, push, pull, push thing here. But I'd rather go factory if I can. That's my goal. That's the kind of fixer I am. I don't believe in good enough. So that's really cool. So now I'm going to order that now, there's two on uh, Amazon. One actually says Honda, and it's two dollars cheaper than the imported one. So I'm going to order it. Twenty bucks. We'll find out. And the one thing I really like about Hondas, and I wish they all had, is the gas shut off halfway to the carburetor. Right? That just makes life better. So that was pretty cool, guys. 
Hey guys, Bruce here. Well, my Honda Wax, uh, what's this called? Thermal Wax Assembly. 16620ZRZ8D842. And we're going to install this bad boy today. Here's our new wax. Thermal wax assembly goes right into the same hole. Right? And then I think we're going to put the uh, put this together with my rods that I got from Jim, Jim Yeski. So we're going to start like this. One. Two. I think this goes on here like that. Boop. Now, are you, are you with me? How much can you see? Not much, eh? We're working right in here. Throw a little light on the subject. Good. So we got our our gasket this assembly that goes on. I believe like that. Oh no, like that. It's the only way for it. And then this goes on like that. One more gasket again. And when you're looking down there, there should be no blockages by gaskets. And we can we can just pop that baby on there. Good. I'm liking it. Now, we need a gasket for the housing. So now, we got our carburetor, that looks like it goes right over there like that, onto that hole like that. I think, I think that's right. I'm going to put that, install the, well I'll do the vent cover after. And that goes over like that. Alright, now let's get my tool with a 10 millimeter socket. The whole trick is to keep pressure keep pressure on it and then zip it down not too tight good get the other one Zip it down. Now I'm going to loosen them off a little bit. One turn. So that we're there. Now I'm going to have a look down the end here to make sure everything's good. It does look good. Now, I've, I just brought out a bunch of gaskets. These are spares. Let's turn on the fuel. And we should have a runner. So let's get you guys back up on your perch where you belong. Get the chair out of here. Okay, come down with me. So if you look in there, it's, way, it's quite a ways in. The choke is closed. So it should fire right up. That's kind of exciting. So 
this is where it was tripping up on me before uh, when it was just not warm and not hot. So I'm going to try and start it now. This is the this is the not starting again. So I, I'm just not sure guys. Am I missing something? Because it did the same thing with the old wax pin. Hmm. I'm just gonna do some investigation. Thank you. Okay guys, I have changed I just changed the carburetor. I noticed that the uh, the pin coming out of the wax actuator wasn't centering in the uh, assembly. So this one was a running carburetor this week. So we're just going to try it. <coughs> now we've got to make sure there's dangerous stuff when you get, when you get clustered. Eh? Good. Should fire. Now, if it fires again, 